Hey Floss Tube, it's Lori of Mischievous Stitches. I hope everyone has had a great week. I know I certainly have. Um, I was able to pick up a frame piece this week. Got a couple things in the mail. I was past a couple of patterns and I had a cute little Junkin find that I want to share with you as well as my updated progress on Rose Quaker Sampler. So I'm going to jump right in. I continue to work on Rose Quaker this week. I am working on it monogamously, and I have finished page five, and I am beginning to move down into page seven. So I've gotten a good bit done this week, and the motifs at the bottom seem to be a little bit larger than some of the ones at the top. And what I mean by that is they're just running over from one page to the next. So even though I've finished page five, Finishing page 5 gives me progress on page 6 and 7, so, but this is where I'm at. This is 40 count platinum linen, stitching with one thread over two linen threads, using the call for DMC colors. I will link the website for um, the designer's webpage where you can download this pattern if you're interested. And I will continue working on that, this into the coming weeks. Um, my goal is to have it finished by the end of March. And I'm pretty sure that I, I will definitely accomplish that. And before the end of March, I do have another piece, that I, a small, that I would like to finish. I attended a retreat last year. And during that retreat, we were given a, a small pincushion piece by... Um, Heartstring Samplery, Beth Twist, and this is it here. And so I made a small start on it, a very small start. And I'm hoping to have that completed and fully finished into a piece before I return to that retreat um, next month. And that's it there. So once again, that's Heartstring Samplery's Queen Bee Pincushion. And I will link Beth's um, Etsy shot, shot, shop down below as well. I'm sure you can find that there. So this past weekend, I went away um, and visited with some friends. And we spent, spent time, uh, you know, talking about all memories of, of things we'd done together and laughing, lots and lots of laughter. And anytime I get together with friends like that and you're having such a wonderful time and just enjoying each other's company, the time goes by like that. And it's, it's just gone before it feels like it's ever really gotten started. But um, we had a really wonderful time and we, and we shared some really delicious food. And but most of all, just shared lots and lots of memories. Some things that I had forgotten about that um, was great to hear the stories again. And we had recently lost um, a member of our little stitch group. And so when we got together, someone had brought um, one of her samplers that it was ABC Blocks by Carrie Chow Samplings. And she had stitched A and B. And some of us were given the opportunity um, to stitch a block in her honor and I took the opportunity to do that of course I don't have it with me here to show it to you but I did take a quick picture of the block that I stitched and I did put the picture on Instagram if you want to check that out but um, I thought it was a really it was not my idea to do that it, it, it was the idea of, of a couple other friends and I thought it was a wonderful one just a way that we could not only stitch on a piece that our friend had stitched on but as we stitched, you, you're thinking about her and it brings her to mind and maybe memories or it was just wonderful. So um, I'm, it was an honor. It was just definitely an honor to stitch on that piece that she had actually held in her hands and stitched too. Um, so in addition to that, while I was there, someone was passing some patterns that she knew that she wouldn't stitch. And so I picked up um, Counting Magpies by Birds of a Feather. And I do know that this one is still for sale on 123 Stitch. I don't think Birds of a Feather is designing anymore. At least I'm pretty sure they're not. 
but I do know that this pattern can still be found there. And this is Fall Ornaments by JBW Designs. And these would look really, really nice for scissors fobs because they're very tiny little pieces. And so I got those two things. And also this week, I had the opportunity to um, join in just to, um, in honor of another young lady. Her name is Emily. And on Wednesdays, many of us stitched something blue for Emily. And I chose to stitch on Midnight in the Garden by Stanford Cove. I started this last year as a stitch along with friends. And I am using a Victoria Moto sampler thread. I got a lot of questions on this as well. I got this off of her eBay shop, which I will link, link in the de description box below. I do not know. I haven't looked to see if this color is still available. But reach out to Nancy if it's not. Um, she may be willing to, to dye more for you or su suggest something that she currently has that's along the same color line. So um, just look below if you're interested. It's there. And this is my progress on, on Midnight in the Garden. I've got a long way to go. But it is a beautiful piece. I'm stitching it with that one uh, variegated thread. And it is, I would say, highly variegated. Because there's grays, there's light blues, there's dark blues. There's faded blue. It's lots of different shades of blue in there. Um, but the, the pattern actually calls for four different colors. But if you look on the pattern picture, it looks like one color. Which is one of the reasons why I like it so much. I like that monochromatic look. And so I decided to go with that color and this is my start. I do not remember what color fabric I am using, um, but it looks to be mocha. So I have that piece. And then I also pulled out four pieces that I wanted to share with you that I would like to focus on this year. Um, I want to stitch for pleasure this year. I don't want to bog myself down with stitch alongs and those kind of things, but at the same time, I would like to get my whip number down, and whether it be by 1 or 5 or, or 10, I just want to get the number down, and I can start that by finishing Rose Quaker, and by finishing Queen of the, what is it, Queen of the, the Little Pincushion. So, these are four others that I have as current whips that I would like to make pro progress on this year, and the first one is going to be a By the Bay Needle Art. And this is my father's house. And I made a small start on this in Mania 2018. I love the simplicity of this piece. I've always I've had this piece for many years. And it's it was time to start it. So it's not primary colors, but it's very basic colors. But it's carried off and in, in, you know with, with symmetry and it, it just I'm I'm drawn to it. So I'll show you my very small start on this. I think this is, this out of the four pieces, this is the one I have the least done on. And I started at my, what I knew was my favorite part is one of those funky parasol trees. At least that's what they remind me of is the lace parasols that you see in maybe an old Victorian movie. So there's that one. And I also have Birds of a Feather by Blackbird Designs. And I started this with a, as a stitch along with Jen of Jen's Stitching Niche. And I'm stitching this on 36 count. No, 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 no. It's a 36 count, but it's a mystery linen. So I'm not sure what it is, but this is, this is my start on that. So I have a little less than two sides of the... Um, border done and a few of the letters but this is a beautiful piece as well and the fabric that I'm using I wish I knew what kind of what fabric this is it just has a great feel to it um, and it 
actually what you're seeing there looks like a bleach stain there. It's not that mottled. The lighting in here is really catching and bleaching it out, but it's not, it's less mottled than what you see there. But this is just a beautiful piece of fabric. I love the color, um, love the feel of it, and I wish I knew what kind it was because I would definitely buy more. So I want to focus on that piece. Oops. And this is a piece that I did as a stitch along with Lynette of Homesteading on the Homefront. And this is Quaker Handwork. And this is by Brenda Gervais. And I got a good bit done on it. And I must have gotten sidetracked with something. And I put it down. But I love seeing everyone else's works on this. So I've gotten a good bit done. And this is a beautiful piece as well, but it's stitched on a piece of 36 count Grandma Slip by XG Designs. And once again, that is a great feeling fabric. She, her fabrics smell, smell nice. I love the modeling of them. And she has great customer service. So if you've never done business with her, um, don't hesitate. She's got beautiful fabrics and great customer service. And then my fourth one is going to be, well, one, two, three. I thought I had pulled four. Maybe I didn't. Well, anywho, I also got two things in the mail this week. And there's just fabric. I got fabric for the Anne Womack that I showed you last week. I got a piece of Country Mocha. And I believe I'm going to use um, DMC 221, which is really deep garnet red, to stitch this one instead of a bright red. So once again, 40 count Country Mocha. And I got a piece of fabric, which is 40 count sandstone linen for the Scarlet House Mary Lindley sampler. And this is a small girl. It's 134 by 127. So it's something you could do with just the threads you have on hand. But I do want to do a floss toss on it. I want to see how those colors work up on this fabric. And I absolutely love that bird. Scarlet House is a wonderful designer, and she has some beautiful things coming out at market this year, I notice. So I'm still following that hashtag, um, Nashville Needlework Market 2020, and I've got a list. I've got a list. I'm sure se several of you do too, but I've got a list because I'm looking forward to it. And the, one of the last things I want to share with you is this little pin cushion. I picked this up. Um, my husband and I... Um, Went on a little jumping trip, and I found this pincushion, and his little thimble is right here. And of course, there were pins already in it. And I don't know what you call this little part here on chickens. Maybe Jan can tell me. But it's a tape measure. How cool is that? <laughs> this little chicken had a little brother, and it was a black cat. And the black cat had a plastic thimble like this one on the tip of its tail um, but it was missing the needle I mean um, the pincushion and the cat of course its tongue was the the, the um, measuring tape but it was more than the the little rooster and I did look them online up online and they were they were priced okay but I would have had to replace that myself, and I thought it took away from the value of it because it, it would not have been original. And so now I'll just keep my eye open for the little black cat. Maybe I'll look up and find him somewhere, but I'm, I'm happy to add this little guy to my little collection. And now for my frame piece. I finished this piece in 2018, the end of 2018. And I stitched it with, with my giggles. We did it as a little stitch along. And this is the Time and Season Sampler by Maura Blackburn. Isn't that beautiful? And there's my frame choice. 
I tried to keep it simple. I didn't want anything like matting or anything that would take away from the piece itself. I wanted something that was going to, you know, to frame it beautifully, but at the same time, I didn't want the frame to be the uh, star of the picture. I wanted it to be my needlework. So, there it is. And this was stitched on a 40 count fabric as well, using the call for DMCs. Um, but it, the, we did change the fabric. I don't remember the name, I mean the color of the fabric, but once again, that is Time and Season by Maura Blackburn. So until next time, I'm going to continue to work on Rose Quaker and hopefully um, when the next couple of weeks come up with a finish on her. Um, and thank you for visiting with me today. Thank you for spending a little of your Sunday evening watching my video and allowing me to share uh, my needlework with you. If you have any questions, just drop them below. And also, I had a 